Welcome to Stocks to Watch. I'm Ashley Berry, and here with me from United Lithium is Scott Eldridge, President and CEO. The exploration and development company is capitalizing on the global demand for lithium and targeting lithium projects in mining-friendly jurisdictions such as Sweden, Finland, and the United States. United Lithium is trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange as ULTH, the OTC in the US as ULTHF, and the Frankfurt Exchange as zero ULA. Welcome to the show, Scott. Great to have you. Thank you very much for having me today, Ashley. Oh, it's a true pleasure. So let's just jump right in. United Lithium Corp focuses on the exploring and developing of lithium resources with several projects, as I mentioned, in Europe and North America. Your projects are strategically positioned for exploration in countries where the demand for lithium is really growing. So perhaps you can give us a brief overview of the company, its projects, and highlight what really sets it apart from other exploration companies in this domain. Absolutely, Ashley. So First and foremost, we focus on hard rock lithium projects versus brines or claystones. And most of the listeners would know that Australia being the world's largest producer of lithium, it's all sourced from pegmatite mines, um, not, not brine stones or clays. So this is all off the shelf technology in terms of processing and um, the, the market for producing spodumene concentrates that come uh, as the production from these hard rock mines. So the same geology that you see in Australia also occurs in Canada, the US, Brazil, uh, Northern Europe, and other parts of the world. So you, they're not only in Australia. So we took that as an opportunity to do a geological study and see what other uh, geographies around the world are conducive to host these types of deposits. And we also wanted to pair in being involved with uh, jurisdictions where there was governmental support to help move these projects faster because we would like to help the electric vehicle uh, revolution that we're experiencing around the world. So in the US, we have three projects, as you said, and in the US, we're supported by the Inflation Reduction Act. And then over in Europe, in Northern Europe, we're located in Sweden and Finland, and Europe is on the verge of adopting their own version of the Inflation Reduction Act, and it's called the Critical Raw Materials Act. And we can talk about that a little bit further. But the underlying theme across the portfolio is that we're in tier one mining jurisdictions that have very strong government support. And I'll briefly mention our team. So this is not our first lithium company, it's actually our third. So we have a very experienced board and team that has done this before and very supportive shareholders that or that own a significant piece of the company um, to help support these projects moving forward and, and take advantage of the opportunity here in the lithium space. Yeah, Scott, I really like how you mentioned the fact that you're leveraging location, community, and government support. So important. Plus, not to mention uh, the highly recognized team that you have. Um, you also recently reported the discovery of three new lithium pegmatites at the Bergby project in Sweden. Um, you mentioned this with promising drilling results. Perhaps you could elaborate on those discoveries specifically and the significance here. Yes. So Sweden, the Bergby project, that's our flagship asset. And the reason is quite simple. It's had the most development there in terms of drilling. Uh, we've now drilled 16,000 meters uh, into the project. That's the most of any of our project and of our projects. And the results are very encouraging. Um, I'll give you a few examples of some of the drill holes that we recently published. 1% lithium oxide over 33 meters almost 2% lithium oxide over 27 meters, 1.5% lithium oxide over 28 meters. And what do these numbers actually mean? Well, if we look at the hard rock pegmatite mining sector, the cutoff grade, meaning what's the difference between ore and waste is 0.5% and up. Mm. So any of our results well exceed the cutoff grade of the industry. The industry average grade is 1%, but we're seeing results that are significantly higher than that. And what sets Bergby apart from other projects around the world is that these results are very close to surface. So these are not deep, deep drill holes. We haven't drilled deeper than 120 meters. So basically the closer an ore body is to the surface, the, the easier and less expensive it is to extract. And another reason we're very excited about Sweden is that we're surrounded by world-class mining infrastructure on this project. And that means we have power to the site, 
There's a railroad that goes through the site as well. We also have a town nearby and we're in very close proximity to a port. So when we look at the future of the project as we move into a development and potentially a construction phase, we check all the boxes of what you would want to see uh, from an infrastructure perspective. Um, we're also in vector two of the Swedish power grid, which means that we're sourced by hydropower, meaning our power costs here would rival Brazil and Quebec at about seven and a half cents Canadian a kilowatt hour. So world-class opportunity here in encircled by amazing infrastructure and there are other projects around the world, you know, they salivate over the infrastructure here that we have at, at Bergby. <laughs> Are they really salivating? I like that. I also like the fact that you talk about that it's so close to the surface, uh, which really, from a financial standpoint, couldn't be any better. And the fact that you check all the boxes in the other areas. Uh, you also reported encouraging uh, intersections and expanded your land package project in Finland. Uh, maybe you can talk about the rationale behind that expansion decision, and the potential you see uh, in this expanded land package specifically. Right, Ashley. So across the water from Sweden in Finland. Um, we have a project there called Ketchan Maki and we've drill confirmed what looks to be a very attractive pegmatite. And the results are so encouraging that we saw this as an opportunity to expand our land package there significantly. So the original land package is about a thousand hectares and we've now increased that 20 fold by adding another 20,000 hectares. And Sweden and Finland, as I said earlier, you know, they do have a uh, similar geology, although they are two separate countries. But we're very encouraged by a private Finnish company called Caliber Lithium. And they're actually in construction now building Europe's first lithium mine for the EV sector. And the commonality when you look at the shield environments that host these hard rock pegmatite projects is there's never just one. There's always four or five, six or seven of these but nobody's really explored in Sweden and Finland. That's why we were so encouraged to go there and, and increase our presence as we feel it's a very underlooked uh, part of the world for these types of deposits and Caliber has shown um, now being fully permitted and fully financed that they're realizing that opportunity to feed the European electric vehicle market. And, and I'll just quickly point out that the European EV market is actually the second largest in the world after China and the US being third. But within Europe, um, there's very, very few mines that feed the critical raw material sector for, for batteries. And that's why the government is stepping in with strong support. Um, one of the main mechanisms that the government is now um, offering to projects like ours in both countries is a fast track permitting process. And that means that we, upon applying for an environmental and a mine permit, there has to be a decision within two years. And I'm not aware of any other jurisdictions in the world that, that offer that. So we've got a lot of things going for the projects here. And these are these are just two top mining jurisdictions. Sweden, I'll just point out, is, is the top mining jurisdiction in, in Europe. It has 12 operating mines. Very uh, pro mining here. And a lot, of, a lot of mining equipment is manufactured in both of these countries. So when we see an opportunity to increase our land package, and we'll be adding more in Finland, by the way, as well as uh, Sweden, we just see this as an opportunity um, that hasn't really seen uh, a massive staking rush like other parts of the world. Well, fantastic, Scott. You know, it really sounds like a very attractive portfolio that you have uh, for investors that are considering investing in United Lithium. What would you tell them and why should United Lithium be considered really a stock to watch today? Yes, Ashley. So um, when I invest, what I like to look at is uh, three main things, uh, people, the capital structure and the projects. So first of all, with United, um, this is not our first lithium company. It's actually our third. The first company that our group put together was Millennial Lithium, where we developed a project in Argentina. And in early 2022, that company was taken over for $400 million US. With that success, um, we started our next company called American Lithium, which is still active today, listed on the NASDAQ, development stage assets in the lithium space, and, and I share offices with that company. So there's a very strong track record here of success. And a lot of the board and management and key shareholders that were part of those first two success stories are now involved with United. So we're sort of the third leg of the stool for our group in, in the lithium space. And 
the board management, strategic advisors, and top shareholders, we we own about 35 to 40 percent of the company. And that's a very strong, powerful message to the to the capital markets that we have significant skin in the game. Um, second is the capital structure. So we have a very tight structure here with only 41 million shares outstanding. Um, most companies would have a significantly higher share count than that. So this is a very tight structure. So that means with good news, it doesn't really take a, a lot of push to see the stock move north. And then thirdly, it's, is the projects. And we've talked about this before, but we've targeted hard rock pegmatite projects in the lithium space, which are the easiest to develop. And we're in two of the top mining jurisdictions uh, in Europe. So when you add in those three layers, um, the sum of those parts means that we're very well positioned to see the company um, be very successful and, and our shareholders um, will will enjoy the, a successful ride here. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, the hot lithium market right now, strategic locations for you, United Lithium in Sweden, Finland and the United States, Western United States. I really want to thank you for your time, Scott Eldridge, president and CEO of United Lithium. Thanks again for joining us here on Stocks to Watch. Certainly a stock to watch for our investors. Thank you, Ashley.